the August 22nd, 2022 um, Parks Meeting Order. Um, second item is approval of the agenda. Made by Supervisor Ponger, seconded by, second. by uh, Supervisor Dowling. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Okay. The third item on the agenda, approval of the July 26th, 2022 minutes. Move to approve made by Supervisor Steve Bender, seconded by James Posner. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of the minutes as presented, so we're saying aye. 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 All opposed? That passes. Um, four, we have public comment. Tom Egan, 37, State Road 116, Armo, Wisconsin. Just have a couple of things here. Number one on the Pepsi agreement, I'm not against it whatsoever, but I know I had a couple supervisors that come up and thanked me because they didn't know what was going on before between the 4 H and the fair and all of that had happened. Um, that Pepsi agreement, which I'm sure Mr. Helms is aware of, that uh, they used to belong to the fair. All that money comes to the fair, and then the park took it over. So they receive all the advertising money and all that uh, sponsorship and that, and they went ahead and build that. So all the money went to the park now. So that's where some of that money went to it. We also used to have the ATM machine, and that all goes to the park now. So that's all been taken away from the uh, fair board. Um, I just wanted to let you know on that. I'm not saying I'm against it or for that. I just want to enlighten some of the people. The other one was uh, Park Citizen member. I do have some concerns over that. Um, Super Chairman Norton brought up some good points last night. Why he or last time, why he wants one. But if we have it in this committee, I don't know what's going to happen if we want it in the next committee. In the next committee. And I'm right in the midst of budget time now. And all these people have got to be paid. Uh, they get paid for it, and you also get paid to go ahead and do mileage if you want to have these people on. Now, I know that two of them were just brought in at this last time, and it didn't get uh, done. The diversity affairs, and um, okay. which one? ARPA. ARPA. And neither one of them uh, has been done yet. So, if we add them to do it, and then if we add this one, and then say someone else can just pay the highways, we go, geez, we want more from the city because there's only one. Uh, still a city here put on there, and then this one here might want to summon. So that's my only concern. If you get too many of the citizens, I'm not against having citizens. I think it's just great. But if you have it for one committee, then I think that you should have to go ahead and let any of them have it for it. So, um, like I said, Chairman Norton, I think you have some good ideas to go along with it, but I just am somewhat concerned over that, just so you're aware of when it comes time for that appointment. Thank you. I got one question for Tom. On the, on the contract, they give 100 cases of, of water away. Yeah. Is it fair to get that too? Yes. We got a few too, like for the pedal pole. Uh, and I think they still might, or they were at when I was still there. They still gave us a pedal to go ahead for like the pedal pole they gave away. Uh, I can't tell you if they are anymore or not. Uh, maybe they're all skin or not. I couldn't tell you. But uh, yes, anything free, we used to get. I know last year, life has stopped 100 cases of water, and I don't think that's fair. So, can I ask a question of the speaker? Mr. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi, thank Hi. you. Um, do you know, I guess, as far as citizen members go, do we have enough county board members? I'm guessing we do that we could add someone from that. I guess I, the only reason I'm bringing it up is because I've heard some, I guess, rumors or talk from citizen members that they feel like they're left out. Mm -hmm. So to me, it might make more sense if we have another county board member here so that they feel more connected to what's going on. Yes. I do we have enough people? I believe you do. I know one that's on this committee has only got one committee that he's on, but he's already on this committee, so we've been. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said a word. I believe that's a real. There is a. <laughs> okay, and then the contracts, I really appreciate your insight on that because I didn't know that the fair had them before with the ATM machine as well. Um, are there any, like, for, I guess what you would know, are there any downfalls to us holding the contracts or not really? No, I'm not against them whatsoever. I'm just saying that's the way it used to be, and then that was taken away. And, and uh, so I know a couple of you had 
come up to me and thank me for enlightening you on what uh, did happen. So that's why I thought I'd bring that forward at this time. Yeah. Um, so, okay. You know, not as long as they share to share, I guess. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any on, anyone on, on Zoom who wants to speak? Um, we have one person on Zoom. If they have any public comment, okay. Adam, I'm here just to observe, and uh, I'm waiting for you to get to uh, item number seven, and I'm interested in that. Thank you. Before I get to item five, I wanted to explain a little bit what happened the last meeting. As you know, we had one member who went away, who was part of us kind of, kind of mad. I want to explain myself. You know, you saw him raising his hand after he was given his turn to speak. What I want to tell you for, that if you ever have questions of any, someone who's a justice, you're always open to that. As long as we don't get to a debate, I'm always open for that. Second thing I want to say is that if any of our fellow supervisors, Chairman Egan, if they come, I'll let them speak. Um, I'll let them question and I'll give them a little leeway, but not much of a debate. So that's why if any other supervisor wanted to come on a different item, I, to me, they're not part of the public comment, you know, I, I, but not, I'll let them speak on that agenda items. I want to get that out there, okay? So having that said, we'll go to item number five, discussion and action for <clears throat> H use of Sunnyview Exposition Center Agreement. And I'll turn it over to you, Adam, Adam told me that what it, the woman from 4-H would not be listed, right? Correct. She had a family issue come up and she was not able to attend this evening. She has looked at all the memo, the resolution, and um, the policy. Um, we passed it around via email before today. She was in agreement with everything that we had in there at this point. Um, the major things that changed from last time, just based off the discussion from last month, was that um, instead of the charge going to no charge, um, so really that was the main change, <laughs> change some wording to make it a little bit more clear. Um, so really, I guess I walk through it step by step and I guess I'll just turn it over to the committee to, but that's all staff has. Um, I, I like the notes that you have on the digital one. I really appreciate that. Um, my only, I guess, concern, I understand that right now 4-H isn't able with their budget to I guess book more shows, but I think we should keep item number two in there in case for some reason the director changes, their financial situation <laughs> changes, at least so they're locked in. You're, and you're referring to number two under the horse project? I guess, um, or number two? Here, I'm on the page five <laughs> under the center. Isn't that there? It's not <laughs> the policy. Or is that for the UW? That's our. Like contract. Am I looking at it? Yes. Item number two. This one? Um, or there's two under the horse, or there's two under educational and there's two under horse. I might be looking at a different version. No. How did you explain it? I mean, what it says. My version says all Winnebago County for age. Oh, hold on. I'm reading the wrong packet. Disregard. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because if, if what you're kind of getting out of that, you know, if they do schedule more than three horse events, right. that's what enough. That's why I thought you were maybe referring yeah. to here. Because yeah. that's where it's oh, like basically going to be a 25% discount. Yeah. So at for fourth, fifth, sixth, you yeah. know, be, if they could book it, but it'd just be 25% discount. Yeah. I just want to make sure that was still in there. Yes. For some reason, their money. Changes. We clarified it a little better okay. under this section, a little bit more okay, perfect. clarification. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the contract for the 4-H. Motion to approve the <clears throat> contract for the 4-H made by Steve Binder, second by... I will second. ...by Richard Dowling. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, seem by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. That passes. Go on item number... Six update access to Lake Butamore, town of Oshkosh. Is that paperwork for number five? Number five, yes, it should be. I'm sorry, number six. Number six, no, sorry. So, number six, I debated about whether or not to just put it in my department head update because it's going to be very short. Um, I just thought because of the, how 
important the conversation seemed last meeting to actually put on the official agenda as an update, kind of like we did with the uh, construction progress across the street. Um, so since uh, the committee uh, instructed um, staff to um, seek um, or reach out to the Wisconsin DOT in regards to that remnant parcel adjacent to the Wyawash Trail, I just wanted to let the committee know that the next day I reached out to the correct um, person um, in their real estate office. They, we worked with the registered deeds and got them all the information they needed. And within that week, they already said they have everything they needed. Um, and the, they advised me just kind of like I advised um, this committee that it's going to be about five to nine months is what their process typically takes as an internal process, which those of you that maybe were on for the, the dog park know that that's roughly about how long it takes. So, um, and through that process, they'll let us know, number one, if they're willing to part with the parcel. Number two, if they're going to ask for any sort of fee or if they're willing to give it away and we work through all that. So at this time, I just wanted to update the committee and if there's any questions, that's why I thought it would be better as an agenda item, um, but just basically inform you that it has been going on for now probably about a month, three weeks. So. Anything? Oh, I don't know about Karen had her hand on Oh, that's correct, Karen. My concern about this is that if there is a piece of property and we turn it into some sort of parking lot for ATVs, as long as these ATVs are traveling around five months an hour, there won't be any upkeep. Up They're not going to do that. And we'll be constantly out there. Showing, breaking, leveling, adding gravel. I don't think it's a good idea. There are plenty of places to, be to access the lake, the big lake. And I think the citizen member came to speak to us, was actually more upset that the property in that area no longer looked like it did 50 or 60 years ago before homes were put on there. And now that they're there, that's what we live with. If this was an issue for him, I mean, somebody should have bought property for access at that point. But if you put in <coughs> <coughs> put in parking for ATVs, you'll be constantly out there fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> I got my more of a question and I was thought I might ask him last time. Come out of hand. Let's say they, the, the Department of Transportation is it's a goal. <laughs> they may request but we felt basically obligated themselves to build the parking lot, bring the pear apple in. Are they still going to willingly do this? And sign something to that agreement. Remember, they were all going to do it. And I know how that goes in life. Everybody's there to help you rip off the floor <laughs> until the day it comes. I think Don Herman, like, if you go up by the car fund, the Otter Street Fishing Club put that dock in. That was probably a $300,000 dock. I, I think Don Herman will get the Otter Street Fishing Club to pay a lot of those costs. They basically build docks. They, they build one on Menominee Drive. You know, that's what they do with their money as a fundraiser. They, they try to enhance fishing for the community. And I, I think, like, John Herman also said that he would help. So I, I don't think we have to worry. If we get the land, I think they'll find the resources to. And the second part of this, they put in the parking lot. <laughs> The county board has to pay for these vehicles to go up and down that trail. So if the board turns it down, we ended up with a nice parking lot for people to go on the trail. They can still walk. It's like Bill Dumler said, he suggested that right now they walk from Beckwood Lake. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to take a four wheel down that trail. It's just that they would have a Right now they walk from Beckwood Lane to the lake. So there would be the same option. They're asking down the line if they could run a, a ATV down there, but they either way they have a place to park. Right now they have no place to park, so all we're really doing is providing a parking lot. Them put a vehicle in, and if they have to take like a 
a little sled and a, a string and pull their sled down to the lake. It, it's a whole lot closer to get to the fishing area from there than it is on off Edgewood Lane. They'd have to park by that church there, community church. That's where they're suggesting that they can park and then walk off. Because Town of Oshkosh does not let ATV vehicles run their roads. So they can't unload their ATV vehicle and drive to the lake. They, they basically have to drop their ATV vehicle off at the lake, park their car, and then walk back to their vehicle. So it, it would just be giving them access to the water. And if it doesn't cost us nothing, that's what we're here for is to provide a service to the community. <clears throat> I mean, it, if they're asking for us to spend two to $300,000, that probably is not gonna happen. I don't think that's what they're asking. I think they're asking for us to get a piece of land and then to work with them to accomplish that goal. All right. You, you know what I'm saying. All, you go through all this work and then everything, like I said, everybody's going to help you rip off a rope till the day you come and no one shows up. Yeah. I, I think because I saw on that trail. If I take that trail, I never get <laughs> such a sign ever. It says you're allowed to use horses on there during a certain period of time. So I didn't know if they were going to give them a certain period of time to take their vehicles down and then pop onto the lake over what I call Slough Bridge here. So I, I just want to make sure that they're going to commit also. Yeah, they're they're actually when they asked last time, they were asking for walking. They didn't even ask for the ATVs. They asked for a parking lot so they could walk to the Slough Bridge. Because right now there's only room in there to park five years. They would like that and that, that would be an avenue that maybe after we acquired the land and built the parking lot that we could adjust. Either way, they'll have a place to park, just like they do right now, not not in the vehicles. But they have to walk. If you, if you drive off around the Edgewood Lane, it's a long ways to the lake. You know, it, it's probably half a mile they have to walk. And they, they still have to walk it. They, they cannot ride their ATV on, on Town of Oshkosh Road. So they have to park their car and they have to walk to the lake. And yes, they could drop their ATV off on the lake, but they still have to go park their car and walk all the way back to that ATV. And when they come in, they have to basically walk to get their car and then go back and load their ATV. You're a little more familiar with this, so I'm going to ask you on the roadway where they access to the lake, and they're already taking their vehicles. Can't they drive their cars on the lake? Or <clears throat> they can as soon as the ice gets thick enough. Well, but they, they like to go out there when there's like three, four inches of ice. And the only way you can get on there is either to walk with the sled, and, and they will walk with the sled before they can get an ATV on there. So <laughs> all winter long, oh, no, no. For this is maybe a month. And then they, they will drive their car on the lake and they'll drive to their fishing spot. And they can cross from like where Skipper Bud is, <laughs> but it's pretty dangerous because there's a lot of current in there and it, it'd be dangerous to cross there with a four wheeler. So it, it works out the best if they can go off of Edgewood. If they can't go off of Edgewood, if they could walk down the trail and take their sled and go off there. Well, I took it wrong. I took it they wanted to drive from the parking lot. Drive down over like the school bridge and then have a place to school in. No, I mean they, they would like that, but they're they're willing to just have a place to park the vehicle. But right now they don't. They have to park by that community church where they have to park. <laughs> and if you know where in relation to where human community church is to where they're fishing, it, it's probably over a mile to walk. So th this you're only talking like three eighths of a mile. It's and the fishing area is right there. Even when they walk off of Edgewood, they, they have a long ways to get on the lake to get to where they're fish. I'm just curious about that because they're going to put up a parking lot. I thought it was they wanted to go from that parking lot down the trail into the lake. That was my impression. I think that's where some of the confusion is because one of the members here, one of the public members here, does want that, didn't want yeah. ATVs. The other one was okay with Still just walking. Was, so, oh, right, like yeah. So, there was a differing, you are correct that you heard both differing opinions. I guess I would be <coughs> cautious in natural agreement about the ATV access because do we now let ATV access on all trails, no matter what time of year? Um, that's one of my concerns. Another concern now, are they going to have to maintain this parking lot? Every year, fall next year, or there can be some agreement. We share that. That's another thing I think we have to work out. I'm open to 
looking at it, but there are some things I think we need to work out. Um, that's my, my, my sense on that. I mean, I wish we would have worked out things a little bit different at the Jerry Finch Dog Park. It didn't. Um, about taking care of mains up there, I guess in the future, I would like to maybe um, have us looked at before we agree to take on other projects or other areas within the county and, and give Tom more to do. So that's, I'm open to it, but that's my concern. The ATV access and the cost, not just um, developing and creating the parking lot, but after it, it's, it is, um, you know, late or whatever. That's my concern. So that's what I would be looking, looking forward to looking at. Yeah, and I'd actually like to echo what <coughs> Karen said about the trails and the destruction that the ATVs could potentially cause. That worries me too. And um, what Jim said, well, just the confusion between them wanting to drive on it or just park somewhere. But I would like to get it in writing too. If they're going to take care of it, I think it's like you said, Steve, that they usually do, which is awesome. I would just look at writing so that if they don't, we can go back and be like, remember? Remember you said you do this? That would make me feel better. People when they get into writing like Ken Robo Park, they're trying to form like the cost on for that on all, all the time. Right. And people you have it in writing, believe me, they're still going to basically, you know, they would love to give us Ken Robo Park with no money. Sure. And we don't want Ken Robo Park with no money. Right. You know, we, we don't need a park there, but Solid waste keeps coming to this board wanting us to take that over and pay all the expenses. And that was never part of the agreement. And it's even like, will we get this parking lot? I mean, like, what do we maintain on that parking lot that's there now? Nothing that I know of. I mean, I can't remember the last time we I mean, it would come down through the grader occasionally add stone if needed, that type of thing. Well, it's, it's a gravel parking lot. You know, the, the maintenance on a gravel parking lot is almost like non-existent. Right. I, mean, I can't remember the last time we spent any money on the parking lot that's there now. So it's like once they're there, unless it, it like that big parking lot over by the expo, you're going to get washouts there, and, and that that will actually cost money to maintain that. But a small parking lot, you might get a, a little bit of a, a pothole where you know a car just goes a little slow over it. But when you're camping and stuff like that, or like where life size has that made on that gravel pad, you <coughs> the washouts there when it rains. They're basically 18 inch washouts. Well, you, you can't expect people to walk in with an 18 inch washout. They have to be regraded. Sure. Come back with it. Sure. This won't be like that. I mean, it's just... well, well, I just wanted to know that for sure because if we were going to drive on it, the horses are only allowed on a certain period. Maybe it doesn't be that much. They're allowed to drive on it. By then, the ground should be frozen also, but it's not. Should be if the ground is not roll, you can't get on the ice. You, pull. you know, you, you have to have at least two inches of ice to walk out there. So if, if there isn't two inches of ice, then, then they don't want to walk there. I mean, there's, there's no way of them. I want the parking lot free. I don't care about the price. <laughs> 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 if it's on sale, we'll look at it. If it's free, yeah, we'll take it. But on the string attached, I thought the string attached was the vehicle's got to drive on the trail. Yeah, and that's not a must. I mean, they'll be happy with a parking lot that's closer than community. Yeah, that's, that's, it that's that way. Yeah. I just, it just came across me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had two people the one that got the <laughs> other one walked out, and Bill Demler, that was civil. So you, you had two different opinions that they both represent the town. One's a town chairman, one's a town supervisor. Okay, um, anything else? So that's going to be put on hold till we well, hear from the deal. Or we need to get more information. Everything you talked about, MOUs, um, all those types of questions, costs, yeah. that will absolutely come through this committee down the road and be in need if this continues. I mean, the earliest could, this could happen, anything, the winter of 2024, 20, 25, or 23? 23, 23, so yeah, in the winter of 23, um, mm -hmm. because um five to nine months so i mean if in theory if it went well and they five months gave us an answer or the committee approved something then it could happen i mean we have to develop the parking lot then but yeah it could happen by next winter if all of it goes through okay um on to item number seven discussion and action Renman bolt landing capital project request 
Um, since uh, well, we, I went through the the Grumman bullet, so I won't go through the design in great detail because um, we did that um, either last month or the month before. Um, the one thing, or there's two items I do want to note though on design, the design that did change, and I'll just go to the estimate actually here. Um, the first thing is um, we added in. Under bathrooms, we added in a larger septic tank and a well, um, which was, I did update the, actually, so it was um, in the June meeting that we went through this, because um, in the July meeting, I updated and said it would be roughly $30,000 to do that, and that is the estimate that we have in there. So 30000 to add water, that's all the plumbing, that's the well and the larger septic <laughs> tank, because with running water, you definitely need a larger tank. And then we did add in, <laughs> now, if you remember right, we didn't add in dredging originally, uh, because of the permitting process with the um, grant with the DNR. And I'm glad we did the grant when we did it because, and I'll get to that in a minute, but the amount of funding that was available in the first round here, um, there's not going to be a, as much funding in the second round. So taking that out of the project, even though we left $99,000 out of the project, what is it gave us more money or saved us money in the sense of um, getting a larger grant? So dredging is in there um, for the, so dredging the, uh, show a picture here, dredging just this inner channel here um, down to five feet. So it's it's very shallow in a lot of areas. We've had meetings with um, the users. Um, that is a need if you're gonna do all of this um, remodeling. And then now boats have a hard time getting out onto the lake um, because it's too shallow. Um, and, and dredging is a standard pr um, practice at a lot of boat launches, usually 10 to 15 years you're dredging, um, depending on <clears> the lake, and depending on um, sediment buildup. So um, since last meeting, we did hear on the Wisconsin DNR grant, um, I went down to uh, Horicon National Marsh, um, and they um, did decide on the grant awards. So, and I'll just stay on this page here, actually, this was in your packet. Um, just to recap, because some of you weren't even on the, the county board at the time, that, um, and some weren't on the committee. Um, when we, back in February, the county board um, approved $185,000 for planning, design, permitting. Um, so those are already approved funds. We've already expended some of those funds to do the design work we've done. We did stop um, and basically told the engineers that we're not going to go any further unless um, we have a project. So we did. Um, we've off the top of my head, it's about 40000 um, to get to the point where we are today. Um, the construction costs and the estimate that I just showed you below is $1,791,500. The funding sources that we have so far, last November, I, uh, we acquired a NRDA grant for $400,000. We secured that in um, November of 2021. And then um, the Wisconsin DNR grant request, um, we did um, receive the full 50%. Um, this does, so this 843,000 does have to go to state joint finance committee. It's a two week passive review process in which they have a chance to review it. So we'll be putting together letters to send out to our state representatives to let them know about the project, um, get them caught up to speed on what this project is. And then um, county, um, the, as I mentioned, county engineering, that, that expense of 185, that just matches up there. And then taking into account the construction budget, the grant uh, from the DNR, the grant from the NRDA, um, the total amount that the county would then um, need to, or I'm, we're requesting from the county to complete the project and to <laughs> commence construction next year in spring is $548,187.50. The uh, goal would be to, if we can get approval from the county board in September, would be to um, finish engineering, finish permitting on the dredging, and go out to bid in late December, early January. Um, as we know with a lot of projects and have been talked about the county board and at this committee level, the earlier you can get out in the cycle, the better. Um, the goal would be to have a spring construction season with the uh, boat landing reopening in July. So that way we do not lose a full season. Um, so out of the um, for full amounts um, of the project, we were able to acquire about $1.2, $1.3 million uh, from outside funds. So it's not all coming from the county. So the request to the Parks Committee um, for this meeting is the $843,312.50. Can I ask since we have a well now that wasn't 
originally included before. Is there money allocated to water testing on that? Or did I? Yeah, when installing, a, when installing a well, I'll go back included? to that estimate. It's included, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yep. Because we have to do some calculations on how deep you're going to need to go. Sure. And yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. And thank you. Know how much more cost to have a fish cleaning station? Well, originally we weren't going to do water, so we weren't adding one. But it's nice to have a place where you can clean your fish after you bring your fish in your boat. And I know a lot of boat landings do have them. Um, Off the top of my head, I do not know that number. Obviously, we'd have water there, so we have the capability to add it. Or, or, with all, with a big garbage is all it is. Or if we have remaining funds and can fit in the, you know, that's always another option. I mean, I, I want to pass this the way it is, but it's something that I, I think that sure as time goes on, we can look at it. It's convenient, like if you go fishing for in Manitowoc, and they, they all have fishing stations, you know, you, you basically you bring the fish home and your garbage don't go out for a week, it gets pretty stinky in your garbage can, you know, where you got a fish cleaning station, it's just a big garbage disposal and water, and you clean your fish and you throw the rest of it in the garbage disposal. And it goes away, you know, so it's not like it makes a big mess or anything. So, but no, I, I would just, I don't want to hold the project up. I would have been talking about that fish on the you know, rug. But I thought about this you got that running water, and you're building these bathrooms, restrooms, whatever you want to state it. And you have the plumbing right there on the back side of it. It shouldn't be anything to really put one of them stations in at all, sure. Just a stainless steel sink with a garbage disposal, all they are. <clears throat> so it's, it's relatively, as long as you have waste and water and you have sewer, yeah, there's not we much. We have sewer, we got septic, I thought. Septic, but that just gets pumped all you. I mean, you're talking like when you grind your fish up, it's, it's not that much. And it's just a convenience, it's, it's an added. Well, we're spending basically over two million dollars for a boat landing, and you know why not make it the the nicest one to run? I agree. Yeah, I mean, and, and you're looking at just a, another few dollars. And when we first got in this, they told us that we were lucky if we got twenty percent from the DNR, and I, I was a firm believer that we'd get fifty percent. But everybody said you know they won't have to get the get Adam Nicola to fifty percent. So I mean we're we're basically paying thirty three cents on the dollar <clears throat> for this whole you know and it'll just be nice I mean to to have something that when you do it do it the best of your ability you know and then you don't live to regret it you know it's like I was always taught it, if you can afford it remodel as nice as you can because otherwise you just live to regret it but if you can't afford it you have to remodel what you 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 can afford. You know, and I, I think with the amount of money we got in the grants from the DNR and we can afford a, a fish cleaning station. It might sell it. <laughs> I don't want to hold the project up. I mean, it's probably talking thirty, forty thousand dollars you know, if it's that much. Well, I'm on the high side. I mean, it's a stainless steel sink with a with a garbage disposal, but you know how it is that when ever you do anything, it's our job takes five days. Do I hear? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution to authorize a capital project for the Winnebago County Parks Department for improvements to the Grundman boat landing at a cost of $1,791,500 with $548,187 being funded by Winnebago County with either a transfer from the Unnecessary General Fund balance or an advance from the General Fund to be reimbursed with subsequent bond issues. Motion by, by Karen Bauer, second by Jim Pos James Posner. Any more discussion? Rachel? I'm happy. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, just to I, I did heard. look up just real quick, like an industrial fish table for $700. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That helps. Okay. Any ready to vote? Okay. Did, um, did Supervisor Pass on? Do you want to make a comment? I know everybody was waiting for this one. Are you? I'm not in charge. Do you want me to ask? If you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if you like, Supervisor I, Cox, did you have any uh, questions or comments that you wanted to ask? This is getting a, getting to be a pretty rich, uh, rich project. 
uh, I I don't know how <clears throat> how it's gotten so so large when we depended so much on the on the grants to come through and getting things prepared so we wouldn't have to spend any more than we've already got in it. Uh, where I see the 843,312 and 50 cents, that's coming out of our general fund. No, so that 843,000 is coming from the Wisconsin DNR through their recreational boating fund grants. So that's a grant from the Wisconsin DNR. But Adam, is that a 50% arrangement with the Wisconsin DNR? So it is, but the NRDA funds of 400,000 can be used as match. So that is why we only, that is why we are only requesting 548,000 is because we can use the 400,000 as part of our 50% match. Do you plan, because we'll have water there now, once you get through the drilling of a well, do you plan to have a pavilion of some sorts with added uh, added toiletry and whatever for uh, for the people that are going to be, whether they're cleaning fish or whatever? We have a very small open air shelter. I believe it's 10 by 20. The, I'm not sure if you can see my screen, but there's a bathroom uh, located here and then a small shelter behind the bathroom, open air shelter. Okay. It would be much different than the one in Black Wolf. If you drive out the Black Wolf, it's pretty much the same bowl landing you're gonna see right there. Yeah, the Black Wolf doesn't have a shelter and it doesn't have a kayak canoe launch or a um, floating floating transit, transit dock. But it does have a bathroom. But it does have a bathroom with a hundred percent. Be very similar. Yep. Yep. Bathroom. Adam, we, we have Fritzy Park up at uh, Fox Crossing that yes. uh, kind of expanded as it went. And uh, we ended up with an enclosed pavilion and all of that sort of thing. And I I I I am a little concerned that you know it's pretty easy to uh, to expand things after you get under the rule and have a, a contractor in there uh, sig making suggestions. I, I'm hoping that uh, you've firmed this up pretty well to, so we don't get to adding and adding and adding more. The plan you see today is the plan that uh, we plan to construct. Um, it doesn't show the dredging, but um, that is in the estimate. Um, there's, we do the due diligence and the planning on the front end because the, so we're not adding things. We're adding what's needed, um, what's based off of public feedback. And this, this is the project in turn, like there wouldn't be any additions to the project. You've got adequate, uh, par uh, adequate parking and, uh, the asphalt's all taken care of in this. Yes, all the asphalt, all the parking would be brand new and we would be doubling the size of the parking that's there currently and adding a much safer um, pull through. Um, whereas before trailers are backing up as far as 550 feet, now there would be a, a better routed um, parking lot where you can go around to get right up to the landing to retrieve your boat. Thank you, Adam, and uh, thank you, Mike, for letting me come in. Um, Chairman Egan, do you have anything you want to say in this resolution? You may. Looks good. Okay. Took that one thing. Oh, real quick. I just really wanted to show you because uh, this year we added uh, the trail counters out there, the car counters, and I just really wanted to quick show you um, some of the data that we've been able over the summer. Um, you can see on the weekend, um, we're getting 670 cars, 650 cars, 625 cars. Um, so this is a very popular landing, uh, 550. Um, I'm going to go to a different, this is daily, but I can give you a better master summary. 
Um, we're seeing roughly 200 on average. Now, granted, keep in <clears> mind, this is doing a 12 month average. Um, and we're obviously not open 12 months of the year, these boat landings, um, but you can kind of see, you know, just in four months, you know, we're roughly 25,000. Um, so just wanted to show you, cause we do have these car counters. We just installed them in May. So we don't have a full set of data starting from April and going through October yet, but I just wanted to at least show you some of the data that we're starting to build for our trails. Cause we have our trails in here as well. And our, um, we have Butemore Boat Landing, um, and we're going to add some more next year so we can start giving you um, usage data of our facilities. So that's all I wanted to quickly add and show. Okay. Here, no more discussion. All okay. <laughs> this is really not that important. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can they, uh, and I was out of that boat landing, I never looked. In the winter, is that kept clean so they can go out doing their ice fishing? from this landing. So we I, I plow for emergency. Talking. People use it 100%. Um, oh. We plow for emergency vehicle access, um, but we do not plow the parking lot fully for parking due to liability going out on the ice and promoting going out on the ice. But yes, 100%, all verbal right. landings are used to get out on the ice. But they can park out on the ice. Correct. A lot of many people they, drive out on the they ice. They could park there with their ATV, they, right? Yeah, people park there with ATVs. Tennessee. With they drive out onto the ice. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Now we're ready to vote. Okay. All of your other resolutions should be saying aye. aye, aye. All opposed. That passed by voice vote. Item seven. Discussion. Or I'm sorry. Eight. Discussion. Action. Parks committee incident member. I guess I'll stop. Start by talking about it. Um. Um, and I'll kind of address what uh, Chairman Egan brought up, you know, after I presented this. And I know what's been happening at the uh, industry committee. I kind of figured he'd have a concern about the per diem in that. Well, this um, citizen member, when right now, as it stands, we member of the committee, whether or not he gets per diem and expenses is would be up to either we added that or the chairman that do that. That's my take on that. Um, you know, I the two committees that do have citizen members, the IS committee and land and water, I, I don't know why and what was the origin of that, but um, you know, I've been on this committee for many years. I think it's a, like I said last time, it's a good way to get a citizen member who's not a member of the county board who's been involved in one or more of our programs or whatever in the parks to be on this committee. Um, let me make it perfectly clear that the, the, like those other two com standing committees who have citizen members would be up to the county board chairman to nominate this in a point. Um, this term will be every two years. That person's term will start and end whenever our term um, was. And then as far as I have, um, and it can always be amended. There would be no limit on whether or not a citizen could serve you know, two years or five or 10, that'd be up decision. So that's the main um, objections I hear. Um, anyone else had discussion, concerns, bring them up. I just think it's a good way to get more citizen input and get more involvement throughout the year on how the parks run. So Jim, I'll let you go. How are we going to get these citizens? Is there a demand for them? Is there a list? I know the city of Oshkosh has all kinds of committees they can't get anybody. Well, this is this is what I would think would happen. If this was passed, this won't get passed by September. And I think we'd have a period of a good, at least 60 days, we'd have to give the chairman the time to get those names um, and then think of someone or not, let me rephrase that, nominate someone. Um, we, anyway, <laughs> I mean, anyone, if you have a person, I would tell them, hey, you want to be a member of this committee? I don't know how they do in the other two committees, but I would say you contact the chairman and tell them your interest. And then the chairman, I would think anytime mm -hmm. after the county board approved it, he could nominate someone. That's how we get names. And then um, after we got the first one, we, they obviously served on this term. And then that's how, you know, I would think that every, at the end of every two years, we'd probably say, do you want to serve again? And then depending on who the new chair, whoever, whoever the chairman would be, whether or not we nominate them. That's how I think 
it would um, go about. We could do what you said. I mean, as soon as people know that there's a citizen member on this committee, you you have to indicate their interest to the chairman in some way, shape, or form. That's what I would think. How is the general public going to know that there is a position or a spot? I think there would be a lot of hearts and beautification for the city. Um, I only knew <laughs> about it because I knew an individual in the city. Okay. My oh. best answer to that, Jim, is, and this is, you know, I've, I said it on a couple of citizen member um, <coughs> boards and commissions. I think it's about how we inform them and how, and also by the county board website, or the, the, the county website. That's how they get informed. I mean, anyone, any of our fellow supervisors can say, hey, hey, we have this parks community person. Do you have interest in parks? Go to contact. It's the same as, you know, we have citizen members on HRC, human services. Health court, all those different ones. How do they get interest? I think they go to the, to the website and <clears throat> they're going to interest. I think also, um, I know Supervisor Flam wanted uh, one of his ideals was I think we used to have some type of um, not booklet or something that tells more about these committees so that people would know about that. So the question you propose to this committee and the, the proposed citizen member would be for any of our citizen members. How do people know that we have citizen members on any of our commission or boards if they we don't inform them? So in my all my years, that's how we best inform them by not just word of mouth through by, by the website and by those means. Hey Crystal, would be in favor of six you need six <laughs> five, you know in six you you basically got a three three at die vote and if you get three people that have the same philosophy that they basically can block most of your votes. I mean, maybe when we have the next committee on committees, you just take one supervisor off this committee and put the rip win with a citizen. Land of Water got two farmers, and that, that's what really helps there because they have the knowledge. I mean, Bowen is a big farmer, and, and Zetner was a, a good sized farmer. They have a lot of knowledge, working knowledge, how to help the land and water, you know. So if you can get a citizen that has a lot of knowledge in uh, parks, Type of position, she could be beneficial. But <coughs> I, I don't think about it. if you have six people, you either have to have five or seven. And I know from the city that if you raise too many concerns on a committee, you just don't get reappointed. So, you know, like we get elected by the people to serve on these committees. So, if you appoint somebody to this committee and he basically doesn't see the same philosophy, well, then all of a sudden when your appointment's done, you just don't get reappointed. You know, they want somebody that, that that's going to be a person that agrees with everything. And as soon as you basically don't agree with their philosophy, well, when your appointment is up, they just say, well, we, you know, it's time for us to, to get some new people on the committee and you don't get reappointed. I, I know that for a fact. So, you know, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to, if you want to do it earlier, I'll, I'll resign from this committee. You could have a citizen of my spot. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I mean, I mean well, I have something more further, but I, not, I think I'd rather hear from Karen and Rachel because I've not heard from them. So either one of you have anything I have. What? Okay. Um, personally, I'm a citizen member of the Menasha Parks and Rec Board, and we did have a vacancy for another citizen member, and it took us about five months to fill it. Um, it's just a, it's a long process. Um, and then we we did get a guy who came to our last meeting and kind of sat in to see, feel it out. Well, we're not guaranteed he's coming back yet. <laughs> um, so I guess just from like a business standpoint, what I said before, I would rather have someone who feels connected to the county board, who understands the budget, especially sometimes citizen members might look at like the grand new boat landing and say, oh, five hundred and eighty thousand dollars, and have sticker shock and just vote no to vote no. So that would be another concern. Um, I really feel like a county board supervisor would be best in the role just because they have a personal commitment to our community already. So that that those are my concerns. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I've read this forward. If if none of them you want to bring a Board for approval, I won't do it. I do think we should think about it. Um, I'm going to say my last thing I won't 
you know, to Steve's point, we have six members on the IS committee with a citizen member. I'm just going to say that. Um, and be open to it. I mean, Tom had, you know, the weather committees want to do it. Fine. I was, I'm this one person. I, I, <laughs> this full disclosure, and I think I told last time, Steve knows this, before the pandemic, I was going to bring this forward, right? And then we had the pandemic, and then we got lost in the last two years. So um, maybe <clears throat> toyed me with some of my colleagues, but I'll reflect that. Unless someone wants to bring it forward, we'll put that on the back corner for now, okay? Unless, but. I, I just had a few things to add to add context. Um, I know land and water was mentioned as having two citizen members, but I believe that state statutes that that two are required on there. So just to be aware. Um, I will echo uh, what Supervisor Dowling said um, in previous um, village cities that I've been in. Um, I was one out recruiting because village president couldn't find anyone. Um, it was very difficult. And kind of the opposite, what I actually found um, when it came to budget is they actually, we would bring things to the board without understanding. We bring a lot, they bring a lot to the board and saying, yeah, let's do this, let's do that. And they didn't quite understand that the budget and that there are, we can't bring everything to the board and spend millions. <laughs> so actually it's the opposite too. So just thought I'd and I just wanted to throw those out there. Okay, anyone want to make a motion? Sorry, one more comment. And I am on the IS committee with yeah. Supervisor Norton, um, and I felt horrible because after the first meeting we had, we did have a citizen member, but was never introduced to us as a citizen member. So I thought they were just looking it. And then we voted on something and they voted. And I was like, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously we all know each other here now, but it did kind of feel awkward for me um they're a great citizen I think they have really great input so nothing against that but I mean the general public does have an option to come to our meeting in person or on Zoom to make comments. I just want to add as far as this appointing uh, another um supervisor you couldn't do that without changing the whole room because it says right in there that there's five supervisors on this committee so it's a point and most of them are other than like that's by state statute. Adam just said uh, there's some that have that by state statute, some that have one person from the outside, but uh, that's all the two farmers are out there. Bruce um, Owens on there and and um, Strokes is on there now. And so, you know, and that's by state statute. So, unless you change the whole rules and then that's going to throw it all off, I think right in there, there'd only be five supervisors appointed to this committee. Okay. No motion from you two? Okay. All right. So we'll move on to item number nine discussion and action 2022 to 2027 Pepsi agreement. Yeah, let's give a little bit of background on this because I apologize. Um, so last year I started <laughs> first week of May. Um, this agreement was on the Parks Committee agenda in April, and then it was on the county board um, in May. Um, and so through that process, uh, previous staff brought this in front of the, the county board, in front of the committee, um, and unfortunately, I'll take the blame, it never got signed. Um, it didn't get signed by the county exec, it didn't. So Pepsi actually reached out to me this year and said, we don't have a signed contract, and um, they deal with a lot of contracts, and so they, they said it happens every now and then. So we looked at things, I was new last year, so and the contract was ready through, so we actually looked at a few things in this contract. And um, we did update, um, as I mentioned, the memo, instead of only getting 1500 a year um, as the, their donation back to the, the county parks, it would be 2000 for the first two years and 2500 thereafter. Their product pricing went down about two, um, in some cases, two or three dollars a case, um, just due to, he wasn't sure why the previous rep had it so high. Uh, um, so that's advantageous definitely to our promoters. So that way we're, we don't have, they don't have to pay as much. Um, and then the only other thing that changed that maybe I guess you could say is a negative for the county is their cap that they can increase um, prices per year went from four to five percent. But with the prices going down two or three dollars when you're talking about nineteen dollars a case, it's going to take them a while to get back up anyways, even if they only go the four to five percent cap um, to where their prices were last year. So those are the only three changes um, that we made in the contract. 
I was just going to bring the contract back, um, but they wanted to also do some of those changes as well as we were talking about it. So other than that, um, and I know some of you weren't on the committee last year um, when this, this came about. So, but I just wanted to make, uh, make you aware of the items that changed versus 2021's contract. I guess what I would like to know is who gets the 100 cases of water. Last Thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely. I don't really see why life vest should get the 100 cases. The bear should get 50 and life vest should get 50. I, I can go along with that. So I, I would venture to say the bear sells as much Pepsi product as life vest sells. So this is, this is um, I put up on the screen, this is the uh, page four of the contract that Supervisor <laughs> is referring to. Pepsi will provide 100 free cases of 16.9 ounce water on an annual basis during the term of the contract. Now, it does not say who it goes to, it goes to the county. So that is at the discretion of the county as to who it does go to. So if the county, um, I mean, really, if we're going to designate who this goes to, I mean, that's that's something that's in our control. Well, I know last year, Vicki gave it all to Life Best, and I, I basically don't believe that that was fair. And Rick, do you know if Life Best got 100 cases this year? This was the first I've heard of it, so I have no idea. Okay. So well, unless Pepsi just knew in their normal operations, otherwise it might not even have given anything to you. You know, it was in the contract last year, and I asked Vicki who got it. It was in the last five-year contract, yeah. Vicky and, and it was in the, life the one you guys approved last year, but then it was also in the previous five-year contract. So I, I guess I, as a parks committee, would like to know who we're going to give that to. And I, I think it should be divided equal between the parks and, and the bear. 50 cases each. You know, they, they each sell about the same amount of product. And I think the idea is it goes to the volunteers and that's it, from what I understood. Right. From what Vicky has been told me. So, I mean, but both have, you know, to that point, County Fair has a lot of volunteers too. So, so let me, and I'm not sure where this came from. I will well, say I mean, that as well. So not sure where it started. There's 100 cases. Is it delivered all at one time <laughs> in a year? I mean, 100 free cases. It's just a benefit that the county is getting. I mean, we could use the water for our staff for that matter. If we well, really, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's not stored. So, let's say whenever, I mean, whenever I'm meeting, we, everyone could have a pre bottle of water or at any time there's a, a county, any type of county volunteer being a volunteer. That's not how it's. We could use this water right now for our employee appreciation rate. I mean, we could have gotten 25 cases of water for free. But I know last year we gave the 100 cases to the he said we gave it to Life Vest. So you order it. If you want 25 cases, you order 25 cases, they'll bring you 25 cases. If you don't order the 100 cases, you get nothing. You can step and carry over. But I would like to see the, the fair and life vest. If, if, if we're going to give it away, if we're going to keep it for the county, then keep it for the county. And when we have something, fine. But I just don't think that we can give it to one <laughs> and not, you know, I know the fair sells as much product as, as what life vest probably sells. You know, they're, they're basically they have a, a five day event and life vest has a three day event. And have we received the county fair? Pepsi contract because I know um, like this is about 13,000. Yeah, they're all in the file. There's something I don't know if they're going to let what they offer. But <clears throat> I mean, that's definitely something. There's that's nowhere like, in the contract that it says it has to go to life buses. That's yeah. like an internal issue. Correct. That's not right. a Correct. Yeah. Issue. I, would, I would agree. But we've never <laughs> decided. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was always stuff like Vicki Redwood, right? <laughs> and I think as a committee, we should know. It, it should be by the equally. It's, it's still, that's true. So, fair, I believe, and, and life bus. The small events that that, that basically are selling the water, you know, that they don't need it. But when you basically have a, a large event and you know, and the life vest, you got the volunteers where you yeah you can buy the water, but then they have to pay that out of their profits. Okay. And I would just basically like to know if somebody asked me what is that hundred cases of the water going, then I could say, well, it's getting split between. Now I have to tell them life vest gets it all. That's where it went, you know, and. It, is that fair? I don't think so. Sure. I, you know, so that's all I'm asking is sure. that we have a knowledge of where that 100 cases of water went. And the county is accountable <clears throat> for who they did give that to. You know, yeah. so um, I, like, I like your idea to just use some of it for the family nights. Yeah, we could. That's a nice idea. Okay, Turner. I agree with Steve. 
I'm going to pixels correct. It's an internal thing. You correct there. You correct. I mean, I don't think we can get, I don't think we can get into dictating where it goes. But do we agree, Steve? I think we should know where it goes. I think Adam and whoever knows that it should just go to one source, you know, Life Fest, Fair, whatever. It should be more somewhat general. Now, I don't know how you do that, to tell you the truth. I mean, I, you know, we got 100 free cases. I don't know if it's easy for Pepsi just to give 100 free cases at Life Fest or they have to keep track. I don't know about that, but. And they keep track of me. Um, you know, I just pulled it up real quick on this screen. Um, County Fair is the calculator that we had three bills because just how it's billed out. Um, so 7,800 was uh, paid to Pepsi for the County Fair. 19,000 was paid to Pepsi for Life Fest. So these are our two biggest events. So they'll be your, your two highest. We have the Mung Labor Day Memorial Day Festivals. Those get higher too, but these are by far the two, two highest. So just your work. Um, well, yeah, actually, that was the bottom. You're looking at about $5,000. <laughs> that's what they have to, they have to buy at the Pepsi. So, it's, so the water, so much a case. So it's, it's like we're giving somebody $5,000. Sure. You know, <laughs> very generous of us. Pretty generous. <laughs> of us. We could keep that water in and we could give it to the employees. Sure. We don't have to give it to anybody. Sure. Um, I'll entertain a motion to agree. We'll approve the uh, agreement with Pepsi. I'll make the motion make to approve the by agreement. Metro Dowling, second by okay. Bender. Any more discussion? Jim, we have a from you. I have no problem. But then I just tell you, if it's on sale, we'll look at it. If it's free, we take it. We'll run. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all, all in favor, somebody saying aye. 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 All opposed? That passed by four. Staff updates. I'll start with Rick. <clears throat> um, Welcome back, Rick. Biggest, biggest thing right now is kind of slowing down from the mass chaos of the summer. <clears throat> um, the construction project is pretty much wrapped up. We're just working on the last of the landscaping and get grass to grow. And so there's another month or so of that. <clears throat> the landscapers will be in and out, uh, taking care of their end of stuff. <clears throat> The CIP project that was approved for the Equine Center, uh, that is kind of under process right now. Uh, meeting with two companies yet this week to get final bids for the gutter project. We have 98% of the lighting components on site. Uh, I think there's just one part that we're waiting for, but it's like 188 units. So pretty much <coughs> can't give anything to those come in. Highway is currently over there today, getting all of the blacktop that's been ripped out around the horse parts. They're getting everything paved. They got in, they're finishing up the drainage system that's being installed to help carry water away. Uh, we did a little ditch work in the area. So that will be pretty significantly noticeable. They should be paving hopefully end of this week or early next week. And you'll see a lot of new black up around there completely wrapping the newer pits. <clears throat> Should cut down on the labor for cleanup considerably. There is about seven feet of gravel on the side of each barn for drainage purposes, but um, we'll make quite a significant difference over there, especially once we can get all of the LED lighting put in. That'll make a vast difference on the utility bills and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> other than that, um, just working through some events. Uh, we have a new event next year with the Oshkosh Court and the Baja event. We're working on that contract that's been months and months of meetings and negotiations to try and figure out what they're doing. And <clears throat> a lot of horse shows, so we got a few more to go yet. We'll start all again. One more call again. Um. Since the chairman's here, chairman <clears throat> talked to me, and maybe you want to talk to Rick with the mail calls. Can you maybe elaborate more? Because <laughs> but he'd be the one who probably would know more about it than I would. So I'll let you speak, Mr. Chairman. I think you know about the mail calls. They're getting used to mail calls anymore. Um, but even at the fair, 
if we wanted to have the black and white go back here, uh, which they're talking they might like to come back here, they could close the deal with that all the places where we're previous management. Um, they'd come back here, but they'd have to be right? we would all tank and all that for you. You don't have to grant you to go out to use things like that. I know that that's the only thing you're going to use them for. That black and white really dumps them all over. You know, I don't know what you had for. So I think that was before my time. Mm -hmm. But maybe not. They come from all over. It's so a <coughs> statewide thing. So we just want the outside of the state. So black and white, that's part of posting how they are. So, so we've written the horses, but we're not bringing a lot of money. But we got put in some money because that. That has been going downhill that uh, over there, and well, we can't use whatsoever the melting part of whatsoever. So, <laughs> yeah, I know that off the hot water meter. And, yeah, like the compressor went out, and we had the electrician look at it because we can't get parts for it. And um, where the board went in after that, they didn't really tell me, they just said they couldn't get it fixed for the fair. That was kind of where they left it for the mine office. So. I don't know whose responsibility that building and the internal equipment is. That's, you know, again, that's back there predating me, so I don't know how that would have worked out. And, but we can definitely have the conversation for sure. It's the fairground. It's the Sunnyview fairground. <clears throat> so, um, you collect rent in that, whoever is using it. Right. So, yeah, I, I know nothing about the equipment in there. That's beyond my. <laughs> it happens, right? Yeah, but I do know that uh, three different people talked to me and they were uh, interested to work out something. I think we all do you uh, for 25. So, what time of year is that going to show? Mm -hmm. I think that is in spring, spring and sometime. Yeah, I mean, somebody gets a hold of me, we'll have a conversation, but I haven't heard from anybody. And then after they talk to Rick, maybe they want to come. He said they maybe want to come before this. Come and talk to the board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, you're next. We have some commercials running on uh, Cumulus now um, as part of the sponsorship contract, contract that we made with them. Uh, we're also going to be starting some. Monthly radio interviews with them as well. We are continuing to work on the thousand hours program. Uh, we found out that we, um, the people who kind of run this official thousand hours program, don't want us to use their name. Um, so we're just kind of creating, I guess, our own program. Um, this is for for next year. We're gonna have the monthly um, programs each month. So. We're still continuing to work on that, getting that, that set up and going. We did receive a $5,000 sponsorship uh, from Lapa Peggy Steel um, to go towards uh, this program we're going to do next year. So that will really help, help us out uh, to get that going. And then we are also, well, I'm working with um, a small group in the county here to create a countywide Facebook page, and we'll be uh, launching that coming up on September 1st. Make sure you all follow that once we launch that. All right. Adam? Awesome. I just want to um, give all our staff kudos starting off, um, but, you know, Rick, for everything you've done over the summer um, with all the different events, um, his first summer in this position. And and Justin, I know what this, um, this committee has been asking for programming. And, you know, obviously we know it's difficult with budgets, but as Justin alluded to, he put a $5,000 sponsorship um, to be able to partner with Oshkosh Rec and uh, BDS Fusion for that program. So some exciting things going on and and Tom's obviously doing a lot with, you know, the staff that we have and uh, in terms of less seasonals lately. Um, so um, just proud of all our staff. Um, we, speaking of seasonals, we are down to two seasonal staff members um, for through one of them will be going back to school shortly. The other one, hopefully he'll um, he's um, an adult and hopefully he'll be able to go a little bit further into fall to keep helping us mow. Um, but um, he actually wasn't even supposed to stay this summer and he stayed with us. So um, it's been really, really great having him. Um, 
you might have noticed actually, um, the highways just shouldered some of the areas in the park today. Um, so if you drive through the park, some of the areas are shouldered. There's a few spots here and there that I um, spoke to the highway department about to um, get addressed um, when they're maybe working on a bigger project and when they have a couple minutes on their way back or on their way out to their project, because um, they still have more shouldering to do this year. But if you got over the community park, um, shouldering around the parking lots over there are complete and all that's left is painting the, the parking lots for on the south side. Uh, we'll see what the total amount is at the end. Uh, we thought um, John Growth and the highway department thought it would be about 500,000 for what they've done. Um, so we'll have more parking lots still to do next year. If you recall, it was about, it was 750,000 that was approved for community park parking lots. So we, we're then going to prioritize which parking lots are the next most needed, most used. Um, so we'll based off condition and then most use. Um, and we're gonna keep um, taking care of as many parking lots as possible. I know when that was originally brought up um, for request from the previous director, that was before COVID, that was several years ago. And at that time, <laughs> I believe it was overlaying all the parking lots. However, <laughs> the highway um, and working through it, Supervisor Bender said it really well earlier about um, Grund and Bolt landing. Um, but the, the idea, you know, we want these to last. So we want to do it right the first time that we can do it complete and do a complete project. We don't want to be coming back in 5, 10, 20, or, you know, it's even 20 years, uh, asphalt parking lots should last longer. Um, so why wash trail? Um, that's been under construction for all the last three miles. Um, that is a potential to be gravel tomorrow. Um, the highways chipped into a block on the dam in Eureka. So it's been a busy uh, summer for the parks and um, the highway department. Um, as, um, um, sorry, as, uh, Rick uh, mentioned, um, they're also over at the Expo right now. Um, we're also working through the Expo sign agreement. Um, it's been back over at their attorney, so hopefully we can bring that to the committee at some point while we're placing the sign. We'll, we'll see if that continues to move along. Storm damage, um, as you remember back in July, we had the big storm damage. Eureka was fully cleaned up last week. There's still some, you know, we need to do to finish that cleanup, but uh, we did a lot of the public ended up taking a lot of that wood. Um, and then the Silent Bridge North approach is almost complete. We just need to uh, grade out and add a little bit of seed, but that will close out by the end of the year. And then if you've been up to the Jerry Finch Winnebago um, County Dog Park last week, uh, lighting was installed. Um, so, and then we're going to be working on correcting that leading fence on uh, Jacobson, um, Jacobson Road. And then um, you'll see uh, the um, heart of the, not the heart of the valley, the um, the basically the uh, Fox um, Community or not the Community Foundation, the Visitor Visitor Bureau. Um, their sign um, sign uh, wayfinding signs up there. You'll see that now the the dog park is on there. We worked at Fox Crossing. They took those signs down and put the dog park on for us. Um, the signs on the Loop the Lake Trail. There's two signs now that we purchased um, because it was, we wanted to add the dog park to it, and the only way to do it was replacing the sign. Um, so now walkers and pedestrians have, um, have wayfinding uh, towards the dog park. And um, Justin worked on two signs to go on Jacobson that the highway department's going to install, um, taking you down um, Ellers or telling you to go down Ellers because it's kind of hidden. You can see down there the dog park. So that that project is starting to wrap up. Hopefully it can be wrapped up by the end of the year as long as we can get that fence contractor in there. Um, but that's uh, been a very good project as well. If you've been up there, there's a, I mean, I'll go up there at nine in the morning and there's six, seven, eight cars up there um, during the middle of the day. Um, so it's definitely a popular location. Um, and that's all the updates I have. Do you want to give them an the update on the budget meeting we had with the county executive? Um, really, the only update I have at this time is we we met with um, yep, Supervisor Norton, myself. Um, Tom was supposed to be there, but he was out sick. Um, we met um, with finance and with the county executive to go over the county executive uh, budget. He, um, we have an ad request in there for a 10-foot um, a mower and for the comprehensive outdoor rec plan that has to be redone every five years. Um, and they will be going through all those ad requests over the next couple of weeks. And uh, we'll be finding out what of our ad requests have been added to the budget. And then I'm hoping because our, our, our internal deadlines would put us on track for me um, having the budget discussion with the committee at next at September meeting. So I'm hoping that we have that in time, even if it's not in the packet, at least to give you two, you know, a month and a half, two months to start looking through things. Um, 
and asking questions. I'd rather otherwise October were the fourth week in October, we might want to look at earlier in October, just because otherwise budget's right around the corner after that. So, um, so overall, you know, went well. Yeah. Out of curiosity, what did you cut from four percent? Um, so our our table of organization structure, um, <laughs> what we did with um, <laughs> Rick moving into the expo manager position and eliminating the park meetings, um, supervisor position, creating an foreman that did have some savings actually in there. Um, we still are with the four percent. We still had. Three or four thousand dollars, but it was a lot, lot, you know, in terms of increase, but it was a lot less than, um, you know, we were expecting from a labor standpoint. When you talk about four percent and labor is a lot of our budget, um, we did have to cut. Um, so this year we did three miles the Wyawash Trail. Um, you know, we have twenty miles of trail, um, over twenty, and last year we only had a mile of rehab every year. You know that's not enough every year to to make sure we're keeping the trails in good shape with all the use we get from them. Um, so we were gonna have three miles of the Mass Scootin next year, but now I turned that back to just two miles. Um, trying to think of any of the other um, off the top of my head, any of the bigger you uh, because we had a lot of utilities are going up, gas is definitely going up, electric's going up. Um, the utilities have let us know and given us a heads up on that. Um, <clears throat> We were able to raise revenue in a little in a few areas, um, such as the expo, based off of expectations um, after this year. Um, so we were able to raise a little bit of revenue. The special event fee um, that we implemented for special events in the park um, provided about six thousand dollars in additional revenue. So there's there's been some avenues where we've seen a little bit of increase um, in revenues too. Um, can we remember to updates? Karen, you have any? Jim. For me. See? I got a um, The paving at the Jerry Finch Golf Park, is that scheduled yet for this year? No. So when I, um, I should have had that in my update with Jerry Finch. So when the <coughs> highway director looked at it, the funding that was approved in the 750000 very specifically, I thought it was more general parks parking lots. It does say community park parking lots. So the county board essentially approved for all that money to go into the community park. Um, so it would have to be a separate project or we'd have to come back to the county board to reallocate um, the highway department to maybe 60,000 to get it done. Um, I still think it would be very valuable to get that done with the amount of use and with how far it is to get up there. Um, it's a lot harder to do maintenance up, you know, as we talked about with distances of certain things. Um, so I still think, but we don't know, we do not have, and it's under the $100,000. So it's not a capital project, um, at least on its own. So, um, so unfortunately, and that just happened the last week or so that we found that out. We were getting ready to actually design it. We were ready to get it in this year, actually. Um, and then that that question was brought up, and we looked at it a little bit further, and you know, we would essentially the county board didn't approve for the the Jerry Finch Park to be paved within that those funds. And then. Uh... With the chip field for the community park, we got that in the budget for next year. I mean, that road where the soccer fields are, that road is disastrous. It's got to be cracked. So, I mean, I, I was amazed that they didn't build some of that off that old shoulder break, you know, and they, they paved the parking lots and they, they didn't get that funnel. That was one of the areas that I informed the highway department today that needed to be addressed because um, they did some of the shouldering in that specific. I know with the spot, the south side of the road in between the, yeah, cool. the dock or the I would have thought that they would have done that when they were doing those. They clean the paper road every night and then they throw away a, a thousand pounds of mix. They could have put a patch in there and, and you know, it would have had a year to sit. But I mean, I, I think the chip ceiling is essential that we get that done next year. And the budget time, if we have to ask for that and add it to the budget after the budget presented, the chip ceiling needs to be done. We spent two and a half million dollars building that road and that, that walkway. And if we don't maintain it, we can replace it again in about seven years because it's all busting up and drying out. And if you go there and look at the where the soccer fields are, that road is it's got cracks in it a half inch, and every time it rains, it's washing the base out. And it's like when you drive on a sponge that happens <laughs> it's up and down so many times, it's like a cornering. What happens eventually it cracks, right? And that's what's happening to that road because we don't have that road basically keeping the water off the base. It's got so many cracks in it, it just continues to move up and down every time it rains. And, when you have an event out there, you've got thousands of cars driving on that road. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a necessity to get that done. And, you know, 
Yeah. That was another thing I did ask the highway department if they could crack seal this year as well. So I know obviously they're they're doing a lot of hard projects right now. And that's all I have. Um, just a few items. One thing, one of the add-ons we have is a, a new lawnmower, right? Correct, a new uh, 10 foot lawnmower. Um, we're replacing the one from 1997, or we want to put replace the one from 1997. Okay, the reason I'm asking is at Parkview on that committee, and they're, one of their ask or add ons is a lawnmower too. I don't know if it's feasible. Is there a way we could buy one lawnmower and share between the two departments since Parkview is so close? Have they contacted you? I, I asked. I asked them to contact someone from the parks department to see if if that's feasible or not. I mean, it. I guess yeah. I, I'm unfamiliar with what size mower and what type of mower they're purchasing. Um, I don't see why. Um, I'm not sure if if it's facilities or their staff specifically that mow that area. Yeah. I don't see why if we shared a mower that they couldn't come by and essentially grab the mower when they need it. Okay. Because this is my understanding, strange situation. Parkview buys the equipment and facilities cuts it. So okay. um, we are, are <laughs> told the county executive that two departments need the same piece of equipment I want to share it, maybe it could be added in the box. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and the biggest questions I'd have to talk to, and Mr. McGinnis isn't here today, but I'd That's have right. to um, yeah. talk to him because the biggest, the piece of equipment that's out the most for us is our mowers. Um, you know, we're in them all, all the time. So the biggest question is how often is the 10 foot okay. mower out there? Um, obviously we have to see what size mower we're looking to get to. Um, but I know Monday through Wednesday for sure we're in mowers and the 10 foot and the 16 foot are mm -hmm. the ones that are always out. And then, but there's, I believe there may be times on Thursdays and Fridays, and I don't know how that fits into the facility schedule and their staffing, but I mean, it's absolutely a good idea um, Ask him when you're talking about sharing equipment, because yeah, the equipment's only getting more expensive. This 10 foot more that um, 2018, something around there that was about 65,000 is now um, 88,000 is what we're, um, the 16 foot more used to be that price, 90,000. Now, uh, <laughs> share to try to get out a ditch more from the, the highway department. We never could get one because we bought our own. They wear all kinds of fast. So if the facilities use it and we use it, you just replace it in half the time. You know, you're really no cost saving. It costs X amount of dollars to cut grass. And you can run a more for X amount of hours and, and you have to replace it. So it's like the more it's cheaper to buy today, if we buy one, it's going to be thousands of dollars cheaper than buying another one in five years. You know, we have $33 million in our performance that we can put in the general fund and we can solve all our, our needs for this county for a while. It's sometimes penny wise and dollar foolish. Um, the second thing, um, just to remind me, Supervisor Gordon asked me when the new arch is going to go up. And I think I told her, and make sure I'm saying I feel it correctly, is when the next phase or one of the phases of the sun is you is done, that's when the arch will blow up. Am I correct in when I say that, Rick or Adam? Yes, we've been planning. Yeah, come to bear arch. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that would be part of um, phase two, which is engineering next year and potential in 24 install. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Lord, okay. Lastly, I, I heard at, at the health board, um, that the testing and whatever they do, COVID or whatever testing at Sunnyvale is going to go on for a lot longer. What do we what do we charge them? And do we <laughs> have we thought about lowest <laughs> rates? If we could, I'm just curious. I mean, yeah. So mm -hmm. just recently that uh, conversation came up actually. Um, so we uh, worked with the health department. Uh, so our daily fee on the south wing um, of the expo, which is where they've been, is it's 500 something. So $500, let's just say mm -hmm. uh, a day. If you were to rent it for your family gathering or for your event, it'd be 500 a day. Being another county department and some of those types of items and obviously working together, what we did is we charged 500 a week. So we charged it as a weekly rate. Um, actually, um, Justin just sent that bill out today, actually, I think, um, but we're through July. Um, I believe, so the health department, from my understanding, is using 
their operational COVID money mm -hmm. basically to cover that rent. So mm -hmm. it's roughly 28,000 for a year um, to rent that area. And they said they did minor, they did some improvements on the equipment, whatever, that was very minor, but they- um, They installed, so we have been talking about, so we created a, there was a wall divider that we put up in the expo. No, they didn't pay for that. That was gonna be part of, we were looking at a couple different options, rent versus just paying for pro some, a few projects here and there. Um, and ultimately we went for rent. We did do that project though. Um, so obviously this extra revenue will cover, you know, a project like that. All right. Um, item 12, next mini date. Um, a couple things. What What's, A, what's better, Monday or Tuesday? I wanna get that straight. That's one thing. Um, fourth Monday, right? Is that what you say? Yeah, the fourth Monday or the Tuesday. Uh, I need some clear. Well, you always have you'll be Fox Valley, right? Um, I just want to, and also, um, <clears throat> we can meet on the Monday, either day, three thirty. I think Adam alluded to we'll be starting the meeting um, at the BMX Club because they um, their contracts coming up. As you can see, and then they want to show us the facility right over there. Yep, we'll be having a contract discussion, and it's a good idea to just tour the facility because that's a big part of their contract discussion. So, um, obviously, you mean on, if you mean on Monday, D30 is the time people only meet the earliest, right? Monday. What? I'm for Monday. You're for Monday? And then the next thing could be next. What? I'm sorry. Just say the next. Be at the BMX. We start, I don't know where that is. That would, we'll start mm -hmm. there and definitely get a map. Yep, I'll get a map. We'll start there. Um, we plan for like a half hour right there, and then we'll come back here to finish to actually have like this discussion. So there's not there's not a great place to we could sit on picnic tables if you guys want to, but okay, so true. We could go in the Axel building. So I that's true. So what what is that Monday? That would be 20... 26. Yeah. I, well, I put up the. <coughs> as Does someone, just there. Chairman or Steve, know when's the date of the WCA conference? That September, October. I just want to make sure. The one in Appleton? That, no, it's a September, oh, annual conference. September 18th. Okay, so. Where, okay, so. What a week after. So what was that date again, Rachel? I'm sorry. Oh, it's the 26th. Okay, September 26th at 3.30. Is that okay, Emma? Can we also add to the next agenda that we would go over the survey results? Yes, you can bring it up, yeah. No, you're right, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I forgot that. that um, um, they are due August 30th is when they said. So hey, you bet, when you click, Sir, submit does that come to to check the item? You can survey them through your Google Forms. I can't Google Forms. Google Forms. So yeah, the the results will go back to the account just and utilize for that. So, um, I know the date was August thirtieth. Do we want to like remind people to have special orders to do it one more time because it's a few weeks before me? Yeah. Does that make a big difference? You people? Oh, it doesn't make a difference to us. It stays open as long as you guys want it open. I know the county Kirk's office for August 30th, but we'll announce it one more time and we'll, we'll say, yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. All right. Um, so, September 26, 2 30 p.m., we'll meet at the BMX. Um, again, then we'll attend the UX Center. Okay. Item 13, agenda <clears throat> item, future agenda items. Um, BMX five year contract discussion. Anything else you want to? I just listed some things I know staff. Uh, BMX five year contract, uh, utility fees uh, for 23 24 at the expo, uh, parks budget overview, hopefully, um, and capital improvement plan. Hopefully, um, it just, I got to have discussions with, with my county exec too. So, oh, that's a, a good, maybe it's good to bring that up. How, how are we doing that? I mean, as a county, and Steve's on that other personal finance. I mean, if we had suggestions, do we make them then and then we run them up and see what happens? I mean, that's, you know. I'm, say, I'm still waiting to hear if there's any yeah. changes from previous year's CIP 
Um, but I know as a committee, we started talking about projects to make sure we, you know, could have enough time to go in depth on some of the projects. Uh, um, and before we get adjourned, one thing, the last thing, have um, the staff um, decided whether, you know, they don't know, um, we used to have those yearly, um, what do you call them, in February and March, what do you call them in February? Um, <laughs> user group meetings, right? We call them, and you thought oh. maybe how useful it was. Yep, we we did one this last February. Okay. February. Pushed it to this what one. I'm um, thinking is, and I'll let your staff. Instead of having that one in February, it would be better to have certain programs or groups come like either a couple months before their programs <clears throat> um, would take place, or afterwards. For example, maybe in. Uh, Maybe not September, but in October or whatever. We have some from the Life Fest. We have some from the County Fair. And then in the winter or right before the soccer season, it goes. I'll let you, Adam, you and the staff, <clears throat> is more better for travelers, people all on at one Saturday in February or to have them. So the Saturday in February is more like a general update okay. from the county parks. <laughs> because the project's going on. This is some things you might need to be aware of. The parking lots are being. We actually meet, so that's just a general. We actually meet individually as staff with the Hmong Festival groups, mm -hmm. the soccer groups, the rugby groups before their big events um, to discuss operations. So unless the committee wants to hear something specifically from a club or from a group, really staff kind of has what they need from our, our okay. operational meetings with them. So I think <laughs> if you wanted to obviously invite a group because you want to know you want to, you want to hear more about their you want to hear about life has been a few years yeah, obviously most certainly that can help um facilitate getting their contact and you know reaching out to them saying hey are you willing to come to one of the, the parks committee meetings um if there's you know if you want to meet with some groups every now and then i think that's a good idea too but yeah from an operational standpoint that's i mean that's more like the february is is more oh. this is what's happening this year here mall club speed will we have anyone next one to do like a little demonstration at the BMX course or not? So the BMX organizers, <laughs> I don't know. We didn't discuss a demonstration, but yeah, they're going to be there to give us a tour of the building because they actually maintain that building. Okay. So we'll go over that. Um, we figured it'd be very important in this case to. Yeah, on the, the bus facility, they, they actually keep that track covered. So I, I don't, I don't think that they would be able to. <clears throat> not that somebody couldn't on the bus facility, but they use a special kind of spray on there because it's play. And what would happen is it would wash it away. Oh. They spray this stuff on there and it keeps that clear so it <clears throat> doesn't get deteriorated. Okay. But it's amazing. It's a heck of a facility. You know, they used to be the, the old whited baseball diamonds. And the BMX track used to be in County Park. But then about probably 15 years ago, they needed <coughs> that space for something else. So they made them kind of move their track over to this facility. But it, it's a nice facility. It's a nice track. It's like one of the best tracks in the state. Awesome. But they also pay no no rent, and I, I don't think that there's a lot of revenue to be made there. <clears throat> you go out there on a Saturday and Sunday, and you watch the good family values at that track. You know, it's like it helps build families. I think, then, and that's kind of what you know. There's only so much money in the family pot, and if, if you want to basically have kids participate, my daughter, probably 25 years ago, was in the BMX at the old track. And, I mean, it was fun. I mean, but you, by the time you buy a bike for $400, you buy the clothes, you know, it, it was a thousand dollars that the kid started in it, but it was good family entertainment, you know. I, I can talk to them about having somebody there to do a demo. Um, but if you actually want to really see them go, this weekend is actually their state sanction race. Oh, okay. Um, Saturday and Sunday, Saturday the level, and then Sunday is their state final trip. Awesome. Thank so you. That'll actually be, be better. Yeah, you can see the parking and everything. Yeah. And just so you know, Rachel and everyone. That was the very first program that was in County Park. So oh. it was started by a county board supervisor at that time for me. So a little okay. bit of history. There. <laughs> yeah. okay. Anything else? For the future agenda, can we just have a list of what's wrong with the monkey parlor? I mean, there is our funds, and if it needs to be rebuilt, 
I guess I never knew there was anything wrong with it. Well, we just honestly found out this. this it was the day before the yeah. fire started when they fired it up. We found out the yeah. So it's all kind of last minute. Um, like I said, I don't know where they left off with it. I said, we can't fix it. <laughs> and that was about the last I heard about it until today. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's only been within like the last month. We can just get an update, but what is as good as possible fix, I guess, would be the term. And we can. Maybe we can find some experts that you know would utilize you know just because we haven't had had uh that type of user in a while just make sure that if there's any upgrades that need to be done to it if we were to bring something back to make sure we can accommodate a larger event so. on the roll all entertain a motion to adjourn Ooh. by Steve vendor second by Rachel Dowling, all oh, better. Oh, better soon by saying aye. 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 Oh. What happened with the concept? Did they have to refund that money?